Hey, hey, it's four o'clock central time. A tick after, and it's Mike, and we're live in the RCO. Cue the music. There is no music. What's going on, people? <laughs> if you want to talk, if you have questions, if you have comments, if you just want to hang out, let me know what's going on with you. I'd love to talk to you. So um, let's see who's coming on today. Carrie, what's up, Carrie? How's your beautiful city? Yeah, so today in the RCO, we are going to be hanging out and talking. Sam and Mathis, hey guys, what's going on, man? I hope you had a blessed day today. We're going to hang out. We're going to talk. I'm going to answer your questions. We're going to find out what's on your mind and what you're thinking about. And um, I don't have any special guests. Now, tomorrow's special guest is Leanne Koppel at 4 o'clock Central Time, the queen of social media branding. She's going to be on live in the RCO, and she's going to help you. Um, with some really simple and easy social media things that you can do to promote your company. Carrie, man, how you doing? Listen, Carrie, Sam, Mathis, Leo, Leo, buddy, what you doing? Thanks for the like there, man. Rodney, put your questions in the box, make your comments, let's talk, let's hang out for a little while. Greg, Greg, man, how you doing? I don't think I've uh, talked to you, I don't think I've seen you before, man. It's great to see you, Greg. Thanks for joining us live in the RCO. Put your questions in the box. Put your comments in the box. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about what's going on in the world of roofing. Let's talk about what's going on with you. Let's, let's talk about your office. Let's talk about your crews. Let's talk about your salespeople. Let's talk about insurance. Let's talk about retail. Let's talk about it. Whatever you want to talk about. Carrie says, it's a beautiful day to be alive. Yes, sir, it is. Mark, what's going on, Mark? It's great to see you as always. Hey, Leo. Rick, always good to see you. The great. Chuck Allen is in the house, the great Chuck Allen, and we're talking about whatever's on your mind today. So if you want to talk about salespeople, you want to talk about crews, you want to talk about manufacturers, whatever is on your mind today. Somebody put something in the box and let's get this show going. Thursday at 4 o'clock, Leanne Koppel is going to be on the social media branding queen. She's going to give you hints, tips, and tricks to promote your roofing company online. You don't want to miss this because Leanne knows her stuff. She knows how to help you get attention and get more leads and grow your business using social media branding. Xavier, all right, man. Put your comments in the box. Let me know what's going on. Let's talk. I wish I had a band, like a live band playing in the background. I got Spotify. That's the best I got. What do you guys want to talk about today? What's going on? If everybody just wants to say hi, I'll say hi. But if you want to talk about it, I'm going to make myself available to you here so we can talk about it, help you grow your company. Hey, I want to help you. Can you hear my wife vacuuming in the background? Rick, it is. I think my wife got, um, she's looking at her Instagram and seeing all these guys uh, not shaving, hanging out with their wives, doing fun, cool things. And she thought, wouldn't it be nice if my husband grew a beard and we could do fun new things? And so I got 50% of that down. I'm growing a beard. We'll see about the fun new things. Chuck Allen, I'm thinking. Leo says, tell us about what's the best way to increase cash flow when times are slow. What's up with Facebook ads? I've not had a third of the leads this year compared to last year. That's a question you want to tune in tomorrow and ask Leanne. Xavier, what's up, everyone? We have visited the site in the past week. Tons of questions. Mathis says, sorry, I got a call to jump on. We haven't had rain in a while, so calls slowed down. All right, so let's talk about cash flow. If you've got an idea about ways to increase cash flow, let us know. Let's talk about it. You know, cash flow stops roofing company owners from being able to move their company forward. Your, your money goes in several places. It goes to draws. It goes to commissions. You've got day-to-day -day operations. You've got payroll on Friday. You've got mortgage companies holding your check. You've got finance companies not releasing the money. 
your cash flow can get really tight in a hurry. Now, I've always preferred to cash flow using customers. That means that I cash flow when I was day to day active in the business, I cash flowed by selling more jobs. You know, and a lot of, I know a lot of people have the philosophy that you shouldn't ask for customers for money up front, but um, I did. You know, I said, hey, listen, that first check the insurance company gives you is just barely enough to buy the materials and get the job started. I'll need to pick that up before we get going. That way I was absolutely sure that I had the first check. Now, the Better Business Bureau will tell you don't give money to people up front. The news will tell you don't give money to people up front. I mean, competitors will say don't give money to people up front. Some of you guys will even say don't give money to people up front. But I was the guy collecting money up front. And it was, you know, $3,000, $5,000. You know, I've collected $50,000 and more up front before I even started the project. And me being able to do that, because um, I, I trusted myself. I knew I was a good guy. I knew I wasn't going to mess him around. I knew I was going to take care of him. Even though my customers sometimes hesitated in handing over those checks, they trusted me because I built that expectation from the front. And uh, they just hand over the check. We'd roll the job and get going. And, you know, it, it did slow me down on the backside with mortgage companies and things like that. but you know, that's, that's part of the deal right there. So that's the way I solved it. I collected the money up front and I set the expectation up front that you're going to pay me up front and the insurance company is going to give you that check up front or the financing that the first check goes to get the materials purchased and let us get rolling here. Aaron Stuckey, Aaron, what's going on, man? Brandon Mills joined. What are the questions you guys have? Put them in the box. While you're doing that, I want to tell you this. Um, a few years ago, I uh, wrote a special report for my Mastermind and Platinum Newsletter subscribers. And um, man, this thing went, it went crazy. Uh, everybody wanted this special report. Um, in fact, it, it got into the hands of one of the major shingle manufacturers. I won't tell you who it was, but one of the major shingle manufacturers got it. And their president um, wanted to know if they could use it in, in their company. And I said, absolutely, because it's, it's the blueprint for higher profits and increased sales. And I don't know anybody, I don't know any company owner that doesn't want higher profits and increased sales. And uh, this is kind of a step-by-step -step blueprint. It's the philosophy, it's the principles of how to do that in your company. I'm gonna be making this available here in a couple of days. And um, there'll be a special website that you go to and you put in your email address. So I have that on record. And uh, you'll be able to get this special report too. If this is something that you'd like to have and um, you don't already have this, uh, get a message to me. Send me a private message on Facebook. Um, shoot me an email or something like that. And, and when the website's up and ready to go, because I, I have to build the back end mechanics for how it automatically sends it out and you, know, you get these emails. But if you want this special report, um, higher profits and increased sales, this is part of my philosophy, what I teach my clients when I'm working with them in the RCO Growth Kit when I'm working with them in RCO Elite. Um, man, you should get it. Uh, just message me and as soon as it's available, I'll send you the link where you can go to that page and download it and you know go through the process there, but extremely valuable. Let's see what else we have here. Xavier says, selling more jobs helps. Yeah, selling more jobs definitely helps cash flow unless you, know, you sell your jobs in such a way where you don't, where you put greater financial strain on your credit lines or you put greater financial strain on your crews waiting for, you know, waiting for them to get paid. Ooh, crews don't like to wait. And salespeople won't wait. You know, they'll, they'll go work for somebody else rather than wait for you to get your cash flow up. Um, Xavier says he's transitioning to a business line of credit. Man, I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting blown up every day with uh, messages and phone calls. Uh, emails, any way they can get a hold of me, they're getting a hold of me saying, you've been approved. You've been approved. Are you guys getting those messages? You've been approved for $100,000. I mean, it's all in my Facebook feed, you know, that I've been approved. Listen, I, I'm not even actively running a roofing company anymore, and I'm still getting approved. I don't know what it's based on, but, you know, this credit line stuff is out of control. It allows them to pull cash as needed and repay once the insurance mortgage funds are made clear. Uh, Rick says uh, in his neck of the woods, and I know that Rick's in central PA, it's customary to take 25, 30% up front. Um, I didn't used to take any, and he said cash flow was killing him. I agree with you, Rick. 
I mean, um, when I'm when I'm selling retail, you know, I want to get about a third of it up front. When I'm selling insurance claims, I want that first check. Now, the way insurance claims works is if it's a 20 year three tab uh, and the roof's 10 years old, they're going to depreciate at 50%. Then they're going to also pull out the, the deductible. Um, so you may only get, you know, a thousand, two thousand. I don't care what that first check is. I want all of that first check because once they've handed me the check, um, or once we've got that sent off to the mortgage company, once I I'm in possession of that money, um, uh, they're locked in. You know, that's the thing about people that pay you when they pay you, um, you have more control over them. All right. James Ryerson joined. What's up, James? How you doing, man? Leo says, thanks for the insight. Dennis Hot Settler joined. What's up, Dennis? Sam is saying, same here. Aaron, Aaron Stuckey, man. We don't get, Aaron says, we don't get any money up front, and it's definitely pretty stressful from time to time. Yeah, Aaron, um, you know, we should probably have a conversation about that, man. Uh, when you're put under stress as a company owner, it impacts your energy. And when your energy gets low, that means your ability to go out and perform at a high level, you know, to sell more jobs or to run your crews more efficiently or to deal with the problems in your business, that gets decreased. And when you become less valuable in your business, your business becomes less valuable. So even though it's uncomfortable and maybe awkward at first to ask for your customers to, to pay you up front, to give you a deposit, to hand those checks over, or to, you know, run their credit card, it will definitely increase your ability to manage your company more efficiently. And I mean, you know, you're our CEO elite right now. And if this is something you want to talk with me about, let's have a conversation about it, man. I can give you the details on that. Xavier says company overhead. What's everyone seeing? I just ran numbers again and we're currently at 20 and a half percent of revenue. You know, the fact, Xavier, that you actually know what your overhead is in comparison to uh, your revenue is a really good first step. Most of the company owners that I work with have no clue. You know, they'll, they'll say they have a clue, but when we actually sit down and we look at the numbers, we analyze the bank statement and uh, we're going through uh, what they're bringing in, uh, they don't know. So I'm going to assume you, you saying 20 and a half percent, you actually know what your numbers are. If you know what your overhead numbers are, you know, what it costs you in fixed and variable costs as related to a percentage of revenue, if you know what that number is, throw it in the comment box. If you want to talk about your overhead, throw it in the comment box. I know it's traditional for a lot of companies to charge their salespeople a percentage of uh, the contract or charge a flat fee, whatever it is, it's an overhead charge or they just reduce commission percentages or they pay a lower salary in order to help cover overhead. But traditionally, you know, in the roofing industry, that overhead charge is 10, sometimes 15, even up to 20% of uh, the contract price. And what, what's funny about that is that salespeople complain about having to pay 10, 15, 20% of the contract price. But what they don't realize is that the benefits that the company's owners bring into the table, the insurance, the, you know, handling the cash flow, taking out the loans, everything, you guys know what all it takes. It's often a lot greater than that 10, 12, 15, 20% than they're paying. And, um, you know, when you're a salesperson, the salesperson thinks the company owner is getting rich. You know, salespeople think you're getting rich. Your in-laws think you're getting rich. You know, your family and friends think you're getting rich. And meanwhile, you've got money and draws and commissions and at the, you know, the material supply house and it's sitting at the mortgage company. You don't even know where your money's at. You know, it's out there. You know, you've got money out there, but you're, you're not getting your hands on it. You can't, you can't hold it. You're, you're not grasping it. So again, that, that makes it difficult. Let's see what you're saying here. Dennis says he does 50% down. Yeah, Dennis, I, I love it, man. 50% down. You know, I think that every company owner, unless they're going to use no money down as a marketing strategy, I think every company owner should be taking money up front for the simple fact that it locks your customer into doing business with you. Once they've given you a check, once they've ran their credit card, once they've paid you some money, the deal is in the works. Until that money changes hands, until it goes from their hand over here to your hand, you know, that deal's still iffy. You know, it, it could go either way. Somebody else could show up at the house or 
a friend or neighbor said, oh, don't use them, you should use the guy I used, and the deal falls apart. But when money changes hands, it locks the deal in. Rick, you're at 24%, and Rick, I know you run a really tight ship, so 24%, that's, you know, that's pretty high. Um, but I know you offer a lot of benefits to your people, and you actually pay salary to your salespeople, which is something that a lot of guys don't do. Um, you invest a lot in marketing and advertising to give those guys opportunities. So, you know, I know if you're saying you're at 24%, you're at 24%. Listen, I'll take a break right here. This is the special report. I sent it out to um, my Platinum Newsletter subscribers. I sent it out to my mastermind. Several years ago, it was a big hit. It's all about how it's the blueprint for higher profits and increased sales. You know, it's, it's the principles that I walk my clients through. And if you want this special report, you don't get have it. Um, in a few days, I'll be dropping a, a website where you can go to the website and download it, fill in your information, you'll be able to get it. But if you want this special report, uh, email me or send me a private message on Facebook and just say, hey, Mike, when that's ready to go out, will you uh, make sure I get the link because I want it. Um, and, you know, like I told you, one of the major shingle manufacturers got a hold of me and they, they loved it so much, their president loved it. And he made sure uh, this blueprint got into the hands of all their people in their organization. And they talked about it at their meetings. I mean, kind of a big deal there, but it is the blueprint. And this is how I help my clients. This is, these are the principles that I use in order to help my clients succeed. So if you wanted to private message me, send me an email. Heck, enough about that. Let's keep going. Xavier says, I'm a stickler for numbers. Our monthly overhead's about 16.5. The reason I ask is because we're getting ready to uh, hire our first salesperson. Well, congratulations, Xavier. And um, wanna make sure we account for proper percentages to not be short to cover our expenses. The salesperson will be fully supported by the office, car, gas, phone, iPad, we would handle billing and invoicing, material orders, et cetera. So you're going to offer a lot of support. You're going to give them guaranteed money. Listen, if, you've, if you're a client of mine, you've been in my training, you'll probably hear me say this over and over again. And I'll say it to you here in the free RCO group. Um, if you're going to guarantee somebody money, that money should be very expensive for them to get. Because guaranteed money means whether we're up, whether we're down, whether we're in or whether we're out, you're getting your money. And in order for somebody to get guaranteed money, you better be getting a lot in return. It has to be expensive for them to get guaranteed money. If you're not charging enough for the money that you're giving out in guarantees, uh, you're ripping yourself off. I mean, you're basically saying, hey, here, let me write you a check and then you do whatever you want. And if it's bad enough, nine, six months later, nine months later, we'll deal with it. We'll put you on probation. I'll keep writing you checks. But uh, eventually, we'll have to do something about it. Listen, if you're going to guarantee money, you better make sure that you're getting good value in return. Otherwise, uh, what kind of business person are you? <laughs> Terrible. Wesley, what's up, man? Wesley Weikert. The conversation today, Wesley, is about overhead and cash flow. That's where it's been going. But guys, if you're watching this right now, you want to talk about what's going on in your business. You want to talk about what you're thinking about, the problems that you're dealing with. Put it in the comments section. If you put it in the comments section, I'll talk about it. I am feeling extremely generous today because it's been a great day. And uh, I'm not shaving, so that makes me feel good too. I haven't made it to the gym, but um, I'm feeling generous. So if you want to talk about something, I'll probably spill the beans and give you more information than you thought you'd get. We've got quite a few people on board right here, so and you're live in the RCO, so let's talk about it. Hi, uh, Jason Lamance. What's up, old friend? How you doing, man? I always think about you and your family. I hope things are well for you. I know, uh, I know that you were doing that high-end metal work, and um, man, I hope that's still going good for you, man. Xavier says thanks, Mike. Okay, so my my wife has this. Um, you guys have heard of an Auric vacuum? I think it's called an Auric. Anyway, she has an Auric vacuum cleaner. And uh, it's got a blue bag on it. It's really light and it swivels like a Dyson, but you know, she loves it. The other day she was in my daughter's room vacuuming and ran, ran over a, a, 
a bobby pin or something like that, and the vacuum shut off. And we couldn't get the vacuum cleaner turned back on. And of course, you know, I don't want to take it to the repair shop because, you know, what kind of man am I if I have somebody else repair my stuff? So I was like, I'll look at it. I'll, I'll take a look at it, see what we can get, get going here. And uh, it, it just sat in my daughter's room for several more hours. My wife said, are you going to look at it or not? She wanted to finish vacuuming. My wife's a vacuum cleaning maniac. So I finally pulled it out that night and, um, you know, I, I read the online manual, you know, I didn't read all of it guys, you know, my man card's not in, you know, I've got no chance of losing my man card. I didn't read it front to back. I just picked a few paragraphs and read a few sentences there. So I read the, I read the manual and it said, you know, check for clogs in the roller pin, uh, check for clogs at the opening, pull the bag off, you know, run a wire through the bag, make sure that there's no blockages there because if there's any blockages, the machine will shut down and it won't work. Now I'm telling you this story for a reason. Sometimes as roofing company owners, um, our progress gets stopped, our growth gets stopped, something happens. Uh, we hit a road bump, you know, um, a crazy customer, something happens with our cash flow. A uh, salesperson leaves, we have a crew that kind of runs off the rails, something crazy happens. There's always something crazy that happens and things shut off like that. They were working and now they're not working. And you're sitting in your office, you're laying in your bed at night with your head on your pillow and you're going, I got to get this fixed. And you go looking for the blockages. You're trying to re remove the bottlenecks. You're trying to figure out what's keeping you from growing. And sometimes it's difficult because you're so close to the forest, you know, you can't even see the trees. You're, you're, you're staring at it. You're staring at the problems, but you can't see it. And that's what it was like with me fixing this vacuum cleaner. I was staring at the problem. It was a power problem. It, it wasn't a clog problem. It was a power problem. And um, I cleaned it all out and I tried to reset it. It has a, a Wi-Fi uh, power button that communicates with the motor below it. And I couldn't get anything to happen. And I was just sitting there. I was like, you know what? Maybe, just maybe, if I pulled the little uh, battery out, it's got one of those little circle batteries in the handle. Maybe that would reset it. And so after going through all this hassle, trying to find the clog, trying, you know, looking at everything and, you know, getting really frustrated by it, I finally pulled the little battery out of the handle, waited about 30 seconds, put it back in, pressed the button and the vacuum cleaner fired up. My wife thought I was a genius. I don't know why I didn't try the reset earlier. You know, two things. Number one, when you're clogged up, when you can't figure out what's going on, when things in your business have gone like this, the first thing I tell you is to back away from the situation. And if you can't back away from the situation, you know, bring somebody else in that can see it from a different perspective. Take a break, you know, go to a music festival, go to the lake, go fishing, do something else other than, you know, stare at it right there the whole time. Create some distance between you and the problem. The other thing I tell you is this, is that, Sometimes, in fact, most of the time, it's a really simple fix. And if all else fails, <laughs> if all else fails, it's like the cable modem on your TV. Just unplug it and then plug it back in again or, or reset it. You know, sometimes resetting things is just as easy as, you know, changing your scenery for a little bit or, you know, changing your perspective for a little bit or getting a hold of a mentor or an advisor that can kind of let you see things from a different perspective. You know, I flipped that thing on. My wife thought I was a genius and I'd been frustrated all afternoon because I wasn't able to figure it out. It was just reset the battery. Amazing how that works, huh? Let's check the messages. All right. Again, guys, I want to remind you, Leanne Koppel is going to join us tomorrow, Thursday, live in the RCO. She's going to uh, give tips, tricks, ideas about how to use your social media to increase your brand's influence in the market, how to increase your authority, generate more leads. I don't know anybody that's better at, um, well, I don't know any better that's, anybody that's better at social media branding than Leanne Cobble. I'm telling you, she's the best, and she's going to be here tomorrow at 4 o'clock live. Also, if you want to get a hold of this special report uh, for higher profits and increased sales, you know, send me a message, uh, shoot me an email, send me a message on Facebook. As soon as it's ready to go, I'll shoot you the link so you can get it. Let's see what the people say here. Jason says, what's up, buddy? Things are great. God's blessing. 
more than we deserve. Oh, that's good to hear, man. Wesley, I'm going to sign a deal shortly. 12,000 roof and gutters. How much would you try to get to deposit today? I'm asking 7,000 remaining upon completion. I like it, Wesley. I like it. If they want to hand me the check in full, I'll take that too. But um, yeah, I like money up front. Brandon says, is it worth hiring a college kid or maybe even a retired guy to run job materials as needed, handle light repairs and other time suckers to free up my time to spend more time on my business or be able to get in front of more customers? What do you guys think? Is it worth Brandon hiring a college kid or a retired guy to run materials and free up his time? What, what's your advice to Brandon? Should he, should he hire a college kid or... Bring on a retired guy. All right. Xavier says our growth plan for 2020 is to expand our commercial division. We're uh, selected as part of the Goldman Sachs 10,000 small business program. We'll be working through that. But the majority of our work right now is residential. What are some tips for commercial roofing growth? All right. That's a good question, Xavier. If you guys have tips for commercial roofing growth, Drop them in the comments and I will read them live in the RCO. And if you have uh, a suggestion for Brandon as far as hiring a college kid or maybe bringing on a retired guy to give him some separation in his business, uh, let us know. Let us know. What do you think? Xavier wants tips for commercial. Brandon wants advice on hiring a college kid. Warren Watts joined. My beautiful wife, Shelly Healy Cote, is on. Shelly, did you hear the story about the vacuum cleaner? I hope so. Eric John Richardson, good afternoon, everyone. Eric, isn't it always a good afternoon when you're in San Diego, California? You know, some of us don't have a beach to look at every day. Warren Watts says, hello. Eric says, yeah, for sure, he should hire out. Dennis Hochstetler says, absolutely. I think Dennis is talking about you hiring somebody, Brandon, you know, to give you some separation in the business. Xavier says, heck yeah, why not? I have a runner that we pay $10 an hour just to run around and set up ladders, deliver materials, et cetera. And, um, you know, in, in the Denver metro area, the front range area where they do so many inspections, running ladders is like a full-time job. I mean, you could, you, you could pay somebody full-time to run around and get your ladders. All right, Rick says, if it's a task that's worth less than $200 an hour, let someone else do it. Rick, you're a genius. Absolute genius. If it's a task worth less than 200 bucks an hour, let someone else do it. Wesley says, I get more commercial growth when I get involved with Conklin. And Wesley would love to share the story of Conklin sometime. Jason's replying to Brandon. He says, yeah, that's a solid plan. Hire somebody. Hire a college kid. Hire somebody retired. Let them work with you on it. How many of you guys have been hit up about Conklin? Listen, I've got a guy that I love for Conklin. His name's Owen. A lot of you guys are friends with him online, Owen Schrock. He is my man. Owen is my man. He works directly with, um, uh, I think it's the Raver Brothers, and um, I've, I've done a live interview with him before, but Owen is the man, but uh, Wesley saying, if you want to talk about it, he'd love to share sometime. Okay. Uh, Xavier, that free up my time substantially. I guess you're talking about what Rick said. Yeah, dude. Um, you know, roofing company owners, one of the reasons why they can't grow. And one of the number one things we work on in the RCO growth kit is how to properly value your time. And we have an entire uh, worksheet that we go through and a little project that we go through in order for you to figure out what your time is actually worth in your business. Uh, I would wager, I would bet that um, you are doing things that you shouldn't be doing. <laughs> I, I would bet you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing because most, most of the growth in your business will come from you leveraging your time, your intellect, uh, your your brains, your knowledge, your ability to get more perspective on your business instead of always being up front like this where you can't see it. Uh, most of the growth in your business will come from you. And when you get better, your business gets better. And when as long as you stay worse, your business will stay worse. 
So Brandon says, I pretty much know the answer is yes. I mean, yeah, I guess we all kind of know that. How much should you pay a guy like that? Okay, well, here's my opinion. Um, you pay a guy like that as much as you need, to, you need to pay him in order to keep him around, but not more. And depending on your part of country, I think, Brandon, you're in Indiana. I can't remember for sure. I think you're in Indiana. But, you know, uh, Midwest, blue-collar job there, depending on who they are, that's going to be somewhere in the $10 to $15 an hour range, uh, maybe 12 You know, you start them out at 12 and move them up. Here's a basic rule of thumb. Of thumb. Look at what the nicer fast food restaurants are paying. Um, is there such a thing as a nicer fast food restaurant? I'm, I'm talking about the places that are not, you know, low end, but, you know, they're a pretty good place. Look at what they're paying and then add a buck or two to it. And uh, that'll usually give you the, the hourly that you need to pay somebody like that. Brandon says, heard of Conklin, but don't know much about it. Xavier, my wife's taking my picture. We gonna post that live? Where are you gonna post that picture? She's gonna put it on Instagram. Do you guys do the Insta? Do guys do Insta? I mean, I'm on Insta every once in a while, and I look over at my wife when I'm in the car, and she's scrolling through Instagram. It's her favorite thing. I know I gotta be on there. Um, but if you do Instagram, look me up. It's Mike Code. Uh, I think it's Mike Code Marketing. But you gonna put that on there now? Okay. All right. Oh, let's see. Xavier, oh man, ain't that true? My business partner, my wife, harps on me doing revenue-producing tasks, running ladders, and material delivery isn't directly producing revenue for us. Xavier, your wife is a very smart woman. You should listen to your wife. You'll live longer. <laughs> Brandon, yeah, Southern Indiana. So it's lower income area. Absolutely. So Brandon and I just use that rule of thumb. You know, if you're closer to Louisville there, just kind of look around. What are the better fast food restaurants paying? Add a buck or two it. Add a buck or two to that hourly wage, and that's probably where you need to be at. Eric in sunny San Diego says, I pay 35, but he is a labor manager. That's a good point, man. That's That allows you to free up your time even more. Labor manager. Good job. Um, Xavier says he's big on Instagram, even more than Facebook. Well, you know, follow me on Instagram. Let's do it. Mike Cody. I think it's maybe Mike Cody or Mike Cody Marketing. I'm not sure which one it is. Let me look at it real quick. One, two, yeah, there it is. Did I see that? Uh, Mike Code Marketing, whatever. There it is. Roofers are way underpaid. Eric says, pay them the right way and you will have a line like Disneyland for great workers. Well, good, man. You know, Eric, uh, big topic of conversation last year was everybody was complaining, I can't find any quality workers and nobody wants to, uh, you know, nobody wants to work. Everybody wants to stay at home and, you know, they don't really want to put in the work. And, you know, the law of su supply and demand just kind of takes care of that problem, doesn't it? If you pay them more, you get better workers. Of course, if you pay them more, you have to be a better company owner because if you're a worse company owner, you can't afford to pay them more. So you've got to grow. Listen, that's why I love working with roofing company owners. I love when they jump in the growth kit because I'm able to take them through an eight week course, get their mind right, get their thinking right, get their principles right, get their strategy right. You know, we have a weekly group coaching call where I talk to them about their business one on one like this. And, um, you know, they have access to a private group. They have an online course material. Listen, when you get better, when you get better, your business will get better. Until the day you get better, you're going to have a hard time finding better workers. You're going to have a hard time hiring people. You're going to have a hard time creating more sales. Listen, that's why I'm going to give this special report away. Um, this is the blueprint for higher profits and increased sales. These are the principles I teach my private clients. You know, I set this out a couple years ago. Some of you may have received it back then because you were mastermind members or 
platinum newsletter subscribers. But if you want this special report, I'm going to give it away. Uh, I just don't have the website built that's going to distribute it out. Send me an email. Uh, send me a private message on Facebook as soon as I have it available to send out. I'll give you that link so you can get it for yourself. All right? Good stuff. Mm, let's see. Rick, guys around here can stand at a convenience store for ten fifty an hour running a register. I try to hire unskilled at 12. So, you know, Rick's kind of using that general rule, too. He's a buck or two more than, you know, what the market bears. Uh, Wesley says, no Instagram for me. Should I? I Wesley, I don't know, man. Um, I know it's a powerful tool, but I, I guess when I'm looking at it, you know, I see some of the people that I follow that I like on Instagram. When I do check in, there's some people that I like. Like I got Will Smith up there right now. I love Will Smith. Uh, that dude's cool. Uh, Gemini Man. My, my son and I went and saw Gemini Man. It was, it was shot from different angles, and it really looked cool. I know it's not a big hit at the box office, but if you like Will Smith, I like Gemini Man. Uh, there's some other people on here. Let's see. Who else do I have on here? I got Grant Cardone. You guys like Grant Cardone? Man, I think he's cool. I think he's good. Um, Grant Cardone's good. I got Tim Story. Um, you know, this summer I I let Hank Norman mentor me. Hank Norman's the guy that taught Grant Cardone how to get on camera. So I got into his course and talking with Hank Norman, let him mentor me. Um, so I mean, there's good people on Instagram and they share different content. I think everybody has a platform that they like best. You know, for me, it's Facebook. Um, I've got a Twitter. I've got an Instagram. I've got a Pinterest I haven't touched in a long time. Um, I've got a LinkedIn. Uh, what else do I got? I got stuff. But, you know, this is where I'm dropping my value. I've got a YouTube. Now, I really, 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 really love YouTube. When I first started recording videos, um, yeah, I would just walk the dog and turn the camera on. Whether I was clean shaven, my hair was messy, whatever I was wearing, I would just record a video, a, an inspirational uh, message, you know, a motivational message, you know, some kind of sales, marketing, presentation, just, just little tips and tricks. And people loved it. You know, that's, that's how GAF found me. Is, um, they said, we've been watching your video. They called me one day. Uh, we've been watching your videos and we'd like for you to come speak for us. And so that's why I was keynoting in Colorado and I traveled up and down the Northeast coast. That's where I met Mark Reitzel. Um, I mean, I, I met a lot of you guys at that, uh, doing that stuff. So yeah, I love YouTube. YouTube's good stuff. All right, let's see what else we got here. Mark Coyle join. Hey Mark, how you doing? Paul Aragon. Always good to see you, Paul. Wesley. Wesley, I would love the special report. Okay, here's the deal, Wesley. You want this special report? Higher profits, increased sales. This is the deal. This is what you have to do. Um, I, I see your comment there, but what I need you to do so I can remember it is I need you to send me a private message. Send me a private message here on Facebook and just say I want the special report. As soon as that website's up and running to where you know it goes out automatically, I'll send you the link and you'll get the special report. Okay, so... Uh, the reason why, you know, I'm not going to set it out individually here is because I need to collect the data. I need to find out who's interested, who's involved, and then send that out. So if you want this special report, uh, you know, the one that I use uh, with my clients, the one that I, you know, one of the major shingle manufacturers use this for their training. Listen, if you want it, private message me. I guess you could shoot me an email too, but private message, since we're already on Facebook, and I'll save those private messages, and as soon as that website's up, I'll send you the link so you can get it. Mike Schmidt. What's up? What's up, Mike Schmidt? Uh, there's somebody there. Do you think they want? Oh, there's Wesley. <laughs> Wesley just sent me a message. He wants the special report. Wesley, you're fast, man. You don't hesitate. If you want the special report like Wesley, uh, send me a message, and you'll hear my You'll hear my ding go off, my Facebook ding go off in the middle of this video, this live video. It'll go, boom, wheel, and we'll know it's you. Uh, Eric says, Mike Rowe is a great follow. Yeah, absolutely, man. Mike Rowe's cool. Uh, Dennis Hotsettler said, used to follow Grant Cardone, but he's over the top. 
clogs your news feed and email inbox, too distracting. I mean, that's the thing. Grant Cardone does kick out a lot of material and, you, you know, most of it's being kicked out by his marketing department. I know that he turns the camera around every once in a while still and, you know, records some raw video like when he's, you know, traveling or on vacation. Um, listen, you, you may not agree with everything Grant Cardone says. And, you know, I have a really good client. Um, we uh, we've you know, we're pushing to 20 million now and they just started three years ago and they've been a private client of mine for that long. But, um, you know, he, he told me some things that happened at the last 10 X conference that he wasn't completely happy about. There we go again. Somebody else wants a special report. Who is it? All right. It's Eric. I'll make sure you get it, Eric. Um, he wasn't completely happy with grant, but listen, if, if you disqualify people based on something that you don't like that they say because they're a flawed individual, because, you know, they're, they're not always perfect, you're going to disqualify everybody in your life. I mean, heck, you're probably going to disqualify most of your in-laws and family, too. I mean, there's nobody perfect out there. Uh, but Grant Cardone's got some great information. If you can stand the, um, the volume that he kicks out, uh, then I love me some Grant. Eric says, I, I miss those daily doses. Thanks, Eric. I appreciate it, man. I am really trying. I'm trying to give more value to people that are more valuable. Um, I teach my clients to do that. And, you know, I've got to live by that rule, too. The people that are most valuable to me in my life should be the people that get the most valuable value from me. And uh, a lot of times what's happening is that... Um, you know, I just can't answer all the messages. I can't, I can't respond to all the comments. You know, a lot of it's gets flagged as spam anyways, because the trolls on YouTube are horrendous. I mean, if you ever seen some of the comments, I've got it, I've got it set up where it, you know, just filters those out, but people say mean things. I mean, you know, not that I'm thin skinned. I don't think too bad, but you know, this guy came on the other day and he's like, you know, you fat ass prin pig. I know I need to lose some weight, but you don't have to be mean about it. Come on. My wife and kids are watching. All right. What else you guys want to talk about? Remember, uh, Leanne Koppel is going to be live in the RCO tomorrow, Thursday, and that will be, what day is Thursday tomorrow? It will be October 24th. She's going to be live in the RCO at four o'clock central time. Going to be giving you tips, tricks, techniques, and ideas to grow your social media to increase your branding, to get more leads from your Facebook. There's nobody better in the business than Leanne Koppel. She is the queen of social media branding. So be here tomorrow at four o'clock. You guys want to talk about anything else? Leave it in the comments box. Leave it in the comment box. The comment, comments box, comment box. Leave it in the comment box and we'll talk about it. So far today, we've talked about overhead. We've talked about hiring somebody to work in your company so that you have more time uh, to focus on the things that are more important to you. We have talked about uh, selling more commercial roofing. We have talked about me fixing my vacuum cleaner. Dennis says, I should clarify that I do like Grant's content, just don't want all the emails. I have several of his books. Yeah, I've got several of his books too. And um, I know that he sends out a lot of emails. His team sends out a lot of emails, you know, and that happened when he, when he teamed up with, with uh, Frank Kern. Frank Kern's an old advertising guy. You know, he, he's, he used to be a young advertising guy, but the decades have rolled by. And now, now Frank Kern is one of, the, one of the old guys in the business. And, you know, Frank told him, you need to hit the list. I remember the video when Frank said, hit the list. So Grant just hit the list. I mean, he went into overdrive on hitting the list. And ever since that conversation with Frank Kern about uh, hitting the list, you've been getting more emails from Grant Cardone. I, I, I love Grant. Uh, I think he's a good guy and uh, flawed, you know, like all of us. Uh, but we can learn a lot from him. Learn a lot from Grant. Okay. So. I'm going to sit here for another minute or two. If you have any other comments or questions, I'd be more than happy to talk about it. If you want to talk about anything going on in your business, I still have a few more minutes on this live and uh, we can hit it. But if not, I'm just going to remind you tomorrow in the RCO is Leanne Koppel. 
If you want this special report, uh, send me a private message on Facebook and I will make sure you get the link where you can download it as soon as, soon as it is available. All right. Yeah, I, you know, Dennis, I guess we're, you know, keep talking about Grant. It, it has made him a lot of cash. It works. You know, that's, that's why Frank Kern told him, hit the list. You know, your ability to make money is, is limited by the number of offers you make. If you have a salesperson and they only make one offer to one person every day, uh, even if they have a 100% closing ratio, um, they're not going to sell as much. They're not going to make as much money as having, you know, multiple salespeople out there making multiple offers a day, getting on top of multiple roofs, writing multiple estimates every day, getting into multiple kitchens and sending out multiple estimates. Hit the list. It's great advice <laughs> until you're the one whose list is getting hit all the time, you know, until it's you getting all the emails. Okay, Xavier, our candidate pool for salesmen with roofing experience is low, but we have a much larger pool of candidates with years of sales experience in general. Don't mind trading in roofing. What's an acceptable base salary plus commission? Xavier, that's kind of an advanced question. It really depends on you. You know, if you're going to give somebody guaranteed money, you better have some demands in place. And I recommend having a probation period to where you can get rid of them. You know, there are additional laws for you to consider, like being a right to work state. Those are things that you may have to consider with um, with an employment attorney. But if you're going to pay them guaranteed money, you better be getting guaranteed results back in return. Otherwise, you'll be writing checks for people who do not perform for you. So be very careful with that uh, salary. Um, real common salary is somewhere between thirty and fifty thousand dollars, with a bonus based on um, a percentage of of contracts signed and a quota in there. So you'll have to kind of work the numbers for yourself and find out where you're at. A lot of that depends on whether or not you're going to be giving a truck, a gas card, whether you're going to pay additional benefits. Um, you have to think about that yourself. So generally speaking. In order for you to be profitable, you can usually only give away about 10% of the gross revenue for what they generate in order to pay them. So, you know, if, if they sell a million dollars a year, 10% uh, would be 100000 And uh, you need to keep the other profit, um, whether you call it overhead or whether you call it profit, you need to keep the rest of that to run your company and then be make it worth your while to teach that person, to give that person the opportunity to make $100,000. And if that $100,000 is represented in $30,000 in base salary and $20,000 in a vehicle and gas and other benefits and you know $50,000 in bonuses, uh, regardless of how that's made, I'm giving you valuable advice right now. And I told you that I'd overshare and overdeliver today, but you have to work that out to where it's about 10% of uh, their gross sales. And if they don't hit those numbers, you need to stop paying them. Eric says, uh, just like it would be impossible to duplicate yourself and have so much passion, what would be your number one tip to teach passion in your sales team? Hmm. You know, I think it's going to sound like a cop out, Eric, and I apologize. But, you know, when I'm hiring people, I don't hire people that I have to create passion in. I, I hire people that are already passionate. Um, when I hire people, I don't hire people that I have to, you know, fire them up to get them motivated. I hire people that are already motivated. Uh, when I hire people that, you know, that I need to generate $100,000 in profits for my company, I don't hire people that only need to make ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. I hire people that already need to make $100,000. So if I want somebody with passion, you know, when I sit down in the interview process, I'm going to find out if they already have a component of being passionate about something in their life already. And if they do, that passion is probably transferable over to something else. If not, um, you know, and passion's important to me, maybe, you know, maybe I pass on them because I want people who already have the characteristics in them uh, that I need in order for them to be successful. And for me, it was always, you know, I don't need you to have roofing experience. I, I need you to have maybe some sales experience. 
I need you to have a good aptitude for learning. Uh, I need you to have a great attitude. And I need you to have some physical abilities. Like, you know, you have to be able to get on a ladder. You have to be able to carry a ladder to a roof. You, you have to be able to jump on the roof and take a look. Um, you know, you have to be able to run a tape measure. I don't need you to be extremely physically talented, but, you know, if you can't do those things, I can't work with you. If you don't have a great attitude already, I can't work with you. If you don't have a good aptitude for learning more, then I can't work with you um, because I'm not going to, I'm not going to make you into something that you aren't already. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take what you are and I'm going to enhance it, make you more of it. They say, you know, that money doesn't change people. It just makes them more of what they already are. The same is true for training people. You can't change people. You can just make them more of what they already are. So if I, if I need to develop passion in somebody, I find somebody with passion. If I need somebody that I need to motivate, I, I find somebody who's already motivated. You know, if I need hard work, I find somebody that already knows how to work hard. You know, military guys are, you know, I, I like military guys. Um, if they have a good attitude. You know, they already have the ability to follow orders. Uh, they have the physical skills to get on the roof. You know, when, when you're hiring people, again, you, you have to consult an employment attorney if you have, you know, certain, because there are, there are employment laws, and especially when you're in California. You know, it seems like uh, there's, there's some special laws that apply there. But, you know, I'm looking for the people that already have what I want to develop even greater. Nathaniel Irwin. Hey, man, what's going on? I just want to say Nathaniel's online right now. I got a message from Nathaniel earlier. He jumped into my training. Um, I met him and his wife. And Nathaniel sent me a message saying that he is platinum preferred with Owens Corning as of today. He just got the news that he's platinum preferred for Owens Corning. And that's a big deal. You know, um, congratulations, man. You know, if I had a like button here, I'd hit the like button to let you know how much how great that is. But uh, congratulations, Nathaniel. Platinum preferred. Let me read that message one more time just to make sure I have it right. Uh, let's see. I have to check so many different places to make sure I have it right. Um, okay. Nathaniel says, uh, we're now OC preferred contractors. Fantastic news, man. That's absolutely great. Congratulations, Nathaniel. All right. Okay, that's I'm gonna I'm gonna tie those loose ends up now and uh, finish up with the announcements. Leanne Koppel's joining us four o'clock tomorrow. If you want to learn how to grow your company using social media, she is the queen of social media branding. If you want this special report for higher profits and increased sales, the one that the you know one of the major shingle manufacturers used in their office with their people, this is the same one that I use to grow the roofing companies I work with one on one as my private clients. If you want this report, send me a private message, and when the website's ready where you can download it, I will send you the link to the website. All right, this is Mike. And uh, thanks for joining me today for Live in the RCO. I'll see you tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Make it a great night.